the final opportunity for Jonas Vingegaard to try to shake up the GC, but would Tarek Pogacar and UAE Team Emirates have other ideas? This was stage 19 of the Tour de France, goes to the highest point of the race up to the Chimet de la Bonnette, up to 2,800 meters, a hard mountain stage, only 145 kilometers, but the final climb, Isola, is 16 k's at over 7%, and with Tarek Pogacar having a three-minute lead on Jonas Vingegaard, we would need to see fireworks from afar, uh, if indeed at all, to put pressure on him. But EF were trying to get in the breakaway. But on the flat start, they kind of got surprised. Visma Lisa bike slip into the breakaway with Matteo Jorgensen, Christoph Laporte, and Wilco Kelderman. And they ripped the gap open in the first six or seven kilometers when EF want Carapaz in the breakaway because he is trying to win the KOM jersey slash the stage because there's double points on Bonnet. So they missed it. They have to keep the gap close. And then on the start of the Col de Var, which is about 20K, 6%, Carapaz jumps across. Nielsen Paulus waits for him, who was in the original breakaway, and he pulls him across to this strong move of about 10 or 15 guys. UAE start to control with Sivakov, Soler, and then they slow down a little bit and put Pollitt on the front. So Pogaccio talking to Almeida. What was he planning for the day? Carapaz gets across, and Keldman, who's in that breakaway for Visma, starts to pull really hard for Matteo Jorgensen. Carapaz is happy, though, because first climb's an HC climb, 20 points, and Pagacha by default, might not be winning the KOM jersey this year, but it pays off for UAE waiting a bit because then Pollock can return to control the gap at about 4 minutes, 4.30 in the Valleys. Bonnet, 23K, 7%. Nils Pollock, has the pull of his life dropping. Lemon, Tratnik, Vingegaard's isolated. His two remaining teammates are up the road. And he's also dropping Felix Gull, who won the Queen stage on Col de la Loge last year, is dropped on Bonnet. So huge work from Niels Pollard. He was good on the Tourmalet, but today he went even better, reducing the group to about 20 riders. Not good news for the breakaway. Simon Yates, the stage hopeful. Carapaz, a bit of both. Jorgensen and Kelvin, why are they in the break? Is it for a move from Vingegaard? Is it for the stage? And the group is now down to about 15 riders with UAE having numbers. Sivakov pulling the end of Bonnet. Is the Vingegaard attack going to come? It doesn't. Carapaz takes the double points on Bonnet. So he's up to 60 already on the first two climbs, looking very, very good for him. And the breakaway was looking okay on the descent. They're going to take more risks than, say, Tade Pogacar and UAE Team Emirates uh, because, yeah, why would Pogacar push like crazy in the descent when he's defending the yellow jersey? They more wait for the Valley UAE with Soler and Sivakov to keep the gap manageable. Refueling time, though, the breakaway's all pulling through. They got it. They know they have to cooperate because if Pogaccio goes crazy like on Sunday, you're going to need all the time you can have to stay ahead. So Kelderman starts to pull at the start of Bonnet. They're obviously going for Jorgensen, stage win, and Soler goes all out when they get to the base of Isola. But it's Yates. Over 15 Ks to go. He didn't look too good. Maybe the start of this week, he's on the radio talking to the team or Pagacha saying, what pace do you want? Yates does an absolutely huge pull for Tade Pagacha, pulling for about four or five kilometers and bringing the gap down by about 45 to 50 seconds before Jorgensen attacks. He gets rid of Simon Yates and Carapaz, at least for the time being. Kelderman going back to the wheel of Carapaz and 13 Ks to go. 3 minutes 20 to the yellow jersey group with Tari Pagacha obviously hungry for more time and another stage win. And the pace was brutal back in that group. Mars dropped, Chicone dropped, Carlos Rodriguez dropped with 11 and a half k's to go. Carapaz gets rid of Kelderman. He tries to get across to Jorgensen before it levels off. The last bit's not so steep and Pagacha attacks in the same place. Sees he's got a gap on Avenapool. Avenapool's trying to get rid of Vingegaard, neither of which get across to the wheel of Pagacha. And this Tour de France, if it wasn't on Sunday... If it wasn't after Super Dev Louis, it was over when Vingegaard just went to the wheel of Remco Evenepoel and didn't even try to respond to Tadej Pogacar. But could his teammate up the road hold on to win the stage? Remco waits for Lander and Lander starts to pull really, really hard on Isla to set up another attack because Remco's only about two minutes behind Vingegaard on GC for second, but he can't distance the Dane wearing the polka dot jersey on behalf of Pogacar at this stage. 
And so the gap, 44 seconds, levels off a bit, and then it kicks up another couple of Ks at 7%. It wasn't looking good for Jorgensen. Pagacha catches Carapaz, goes past him. Carapaz can't even get to the wheel. Has Simon Yates in his sights and gets to him with 3Ks to go. Goes past him just as easily. And under the 2K banner, it wasn't even close in the end, despite starting with a 4 minute 20 lead at the base of Isla. Pagacha catches Matteo Jorgensen and dances past him with his final attack on this Isla stage. So, stage over. GC over, Pagacha, another huge performance, basically in line with his level on Sunday on Plateau de Bay, probably the, if not the best, the second best climbing performance in the history of cycling, wins the stage, takes about four stage wins so far, and Remco Evenpool fought valiantly, chased behind, and then couldn't distance Fingergaard in the sprint, but that's another battle we might see more of tomorrow. So Tadej Pagacha reigns supreme, after winning the Giro, he's back. Vingegaard looked pretty spent at the finish line. Pagacha wins the stage 21 seconds ahead of Jorgensen, then Yates, Carapaz, Evenepoel, Vingegaard, Almeida, Lander, Kelderman, and Derek G with a great performance. Here's what Pagacha had to say after the stage. Yeah, I'm in uh, yeah, uh, Queen stage of Tour de France. Now I can confirm that Bonnet is really scary climb. Uh, on the race, in the training, it's pretty, pretty cool because you can uh, skip the last kilometer. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm super happy that uh, I had good legs today and uh, yeah, we were uh, here training for a whole month between Giro and Tour. It was a hard uh, period of time. Also, it's no easy days because every time you need to go up the climb and uh, I knew this climb super well. I was speaking to teammates, uh, we were making, uh, yeah, uh, we were speaking already in training camp how we want to race this day. And we did it exactly like uh, we said, uh, to the point where I attacked, and uh, it was it went uh, really, yeah, 100% perfect. When you saw that uh, Matteo Jorgensen and Kelderman were in the breakaway group, were you expecting some move, some action from Visma? Yeah, we were. Uh, we start. Uh, we were setting a good pace on Bonnet, um, so uh, there maybe uh, Jonas would maybe try on Bonnet. That was my uh, initial thought. Uh, but then, I, then we saw that they were riding uh, really, also really super uh, fast in the front. So I think their main goal today was to take the stage. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I take that. <laughs> in terms of GC, quite a lot of changes at the back end of the top 10 with Derek G moving up to 8th after Ciccone struggled and Matteo Jorgensen moving up 5 spots into 9th in the top 10. Hope you enjoyed the video. We've got the last mountain stage tomorrow finishing on Creole. Should be a breakaway. Carapaz will be in the break to take KOM points, and I'll see you with a recap tomorrow. Ciao.